Hi there, I'm Brian Sutherland, and today I am your guest on Music Studio Live. Coming up on this episode of Music Studio Live. We're going for a ride. I gotta tell you, French gotta... horn is the hardest instrument yeah. in the universe. But when I got there, instead of a, um, oh, what did I say? Oh my gosh. I can't remember the words. We'll be right back on Music yeah. Studio Live. <laughs> Working for well, us. think about all the actors okay. that go on countless Absolutely. auditions. Oh, I know. All the time. It, basically, you're kind of auditioning. Right. Uh, I mean, to a degree. Not, yeah, no, not basically. You, you are. are. Oh, yeah. yeah. Rolling. <laughs> Here we go. Hi, guys. My name is Dara. I'm a drummer and producer, and I started a podcast with my friend Sarah called Music Studio Live. Together, we talk with singer-songwriters and music makers about all things related to music. We hope you enjoy the show, and here we go. All right. Hello. Welcome to Music Studio Live. Hi there. I'm Sarah Hadica. And I'm Daryl Nutt. <laughs> we have a wonderful show for you today. <laughs> wonderful. I don't say that word a lot. Well, We have an extravagantly outrageous show today. Uh, we have Brian Sutherland killer singer-songwriter from our area in Southwest Florida. and originally. now Originally, and now he lives in Nashville. Mm -hmm. And his songs are amazing. I mean... He had me in tears. I know. It was... Ah, oh, he's great. He's awesome. And uh, so we're going to bring you that here in a little bit, but I did have a couple of things I wanted to talk to Sarah about and share with you guys. I'm a little nervous. One of them, right off the bat, is I wrote a song, the very first song I ever wrote in my whole life, I was, I want to say 16, maybe 17, and I wrote it and gave it to my mom as a gift. Okay. A song for my mom. I think I've seen this, actually. And I'm going to play the video right now that I made, the first video I ever made. It says 1989. 1989, so I was 18. Wow. So I was 18, not 16 or 17. I'm going to play that now. <laughs> and we can comment on my first song ever written. So far, it's pretty. Then I'll put it up on the epic. screen and split screen us. When I woke up late at night, you made the hurt seem all Yes, that right. is me, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> With my Goldilocks. I'm actually just shocked that you're singing. That's not my voice. Oh, it's not? No. The answer was in your That was a friend of mine named That's Tony funny. Hooper. You actually, the voice goes with your face. Because Tony it's looked funny. just like that. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> I love the headlines. I think he had curly hair. <laughs> yeah, actually, Tony did all, everything. I think he did the drum programming, all the guitars. Oh, wow. Um, in my friend Mike Caputi's uh, home studio back then. I'm proud as I can <laughs> so, did your mother assume that this was actually you singing? No, she, knew, she, she knew. knew right away it wasn't me singing. But the reason I wrote the song is she was getting ready to go on the road. Yeah. And I was getting ready to, you know, leave, graduate high school right, and leave. Yeah. And so, what I did is I wrote the song, put it in a cassette tape, and bought her a Walkman that had like a pitch so control she so she could learn songs on the road and stuff. Oh, interesting. So, and I put it in there, and she just listened to it on Christmas morning. And I think it was Christmas, yeah. Look at the uh, facial acne. That's pretty funny. <laughs> Adolescent skin. Oh, that was a rough time in life. Yep. Need you here with me. Need you here. Oh God, don't sing. <laughs> don't sing. <laughs> so we don't have to go wow. to chorus number two, but I just wanted to share the very first song is on video. That's great. That I ever wrote. <laughs> and and I've only written probably 20 songs with lyrics since then, mostly instrumental stuff. But That's a good amount, though, I would say. I'm 49. That's not a very good well, amount of songs. I mean, it's better than zero. Maybe for a drummer. One, maybe for one. a drummer, but yeah, I so. know. I mean, I I think I wrote I wrote an, an instrumental as my first song, basically. Cool. Like back when I was in in high school, and I remember I had to perform it a million times for people. Nice. It's funny. So like talent shows and things, or yeah, and band concerts and things like that. I mean, it was. 
I don't know. I think it was a very exciting thing for everybody. So, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, creative um, emotions, right, exactly. singing, well, you, instrumentally, instrumentally. Right, yeah. I don't know why I didn't sing. I really, it's funny because I consider myself a vocalist, like primarily, and I really, I grew up not singing much. Did you play it on piano? I did. I played it on so piano. So it wasn't a yeah. solo French horn piece. No. That no. Been cool. Well, that's another story, actually, is my sister and I played French horn together. We actually took our first French horn lessons simultaneously. Nice. Um, I was a freshman in high school at the time, and she was maybe four years younger. Anyway, she actually wrote a horn duet that we performed at one of the band concerts. What's happening? Hang that's, on. That's from your phone. Are you listening to lullabies or something? No, that's L Ricky Lee Jones was oh, just playing so on my phone for some reason. So, anyway. I know, I heard that. In, well, how weird. Yeah. Anyway, so we performed it at a band concert. She wrote a duet for French horn? For French horn. So she oh, and cool. I both played it. Here's the thing. We were playing, and it was so funny. And you I just laughing? burst out laughing, and <laughs> I couldn't pull myself together in front of an audience in front of everyone it was like the whole entire gymnasium was full of people was your sister upset she was so mad and the band director was livid oh wow uh, did you pull it together and finish the piece no it no, was over because I of your laughing couldn't stop laughing like <laughs> i was on the stage i fell off my chair laughing oh my i wish that was on youtube I think that there is a video of that. I will oh, hopefully find wow. it. Oh, wow. Yeah, when I go home for the holidays, if I do, I'll sit oh, and go you through need to videos. Gather. I just shared some, some video good... of my personal life, so you need to share some <laughs> There's of some good footage of me out there for sure. That Wow. Oh, man. That's but awesome. That, I think my sister still has a little bit of hatred nice. for me it's because just... of that. <laughs> so this is the sister that lives in Buffalo. Yes. Where I'm from, where yes. that video was shot. No. Where that song was written, this video was shot in Florida. Oh, when funny. I, I moved here in 89. Okay, so you wrote the song, though, probably, The year before? Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, th oh, I think I was 17 when I... Yeah, yeah. the year before. Durr. When you hit your 40s, every, all the dates kind of <laughs> disappear and you get confused. And I haven't gotten there yet, so I wouldn't know. Whatever. Uh, I haven't. <laughs> I know. So... Um, so I just had a birthday. I just turned 49. Yeah. I'm embracing it. It's not 50, so it's not like some big monumental thing. But I know, 50, right? I know. Isn't that awful? We have Kieran in the studio with us again today. You want to come and say hi? You, you want to be on the on? podcast? Come here. We'll blur out his, his face so nobody can see him online. They can see him. <laughs> say hi. Hello. I think he's just going to sleep on me. Okay, that's cool. So, yeah, I had a birthday, and um, I had a very interesting birthday. I'm not going to elaborate on it, but it was extremely gratifying the last 15 minutes of my birthday. Oh, the last 15 <laughs> minutes? Okay. Um, it's just one of those things where you're. I was on a gig. I was. It was in a bar. It was the end of the night. And it just, I got, in the, after the event happened, I got in the car, and I just felt really, really good with my self, where I was in my life, Good, yeah. where I was with my performing, my musical stuff, my studio, this That's podcast, important. Absolutely. all the different things, my friends, my little friends, yeah. um, <laughs> with everything going on. And it just was very gratifying. So maybe next year it'll even be more because I'll be 50. Who knows? Kieran, how old are you? Not 50. No, oh, you're 50. Yeah, you're 50. You're so old. Maybe so, for Halloween you can be an old man again. <laughs> yeah, <that'd be laughs> he was fun. that last year. <laughs> cool. I can be an old man for Halloween, and I don't have to do anything. Just right, I know. wear this. <laughs> I'll wear this costume. Oh, that's great. So, is there anything you want to hit on before we go ahead and play uh, Brian Sutherland's uh, podcast? Well, I just want to reiterate about how amazing he is. Yeah. I mean, it's. I was big fan. We're big fans. Absolutely blown away by just his musical abilities, and he's just really compelling, actually. So yeah. I really hope you enjoy it. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> I have nothing else to say. So here's the podcast Here with Brian Sutherland. Enjoy. Thanks. Thanks for watching and subscribe. Uh, and subscribe, and I'll do that thing I do.
Yeah, I'm I not going to since I'll drop my child. <laughs> no, don't do that. You want to say goodbye, Kieran? Say bye-bye. Look, look right in the camera and say bye-bye. Bye. You're tuned in to Music Studio Live. We have a great guest today. He's right here. Hello, Brian Sutherland. Hi, Hi. Daryl. Hi, Sarah. Wow, that was very robotic of you. Thank you for having me today. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks for having me. Yeah, in. man. Appreciate it. Uh, we just recorded a couple songs for you, uh, some of Brian's originals, and they are really, really awesome. We're going to talk about it here in a little bit. You can't stop singing one of them. Where do you go? Uh, it's a good song. It is. But why do you have to it. use that voice? It's Can Michael you use a different voice? Sarah's from a different era where Michael <laughs> McDonald isn't cool to her. But to me, uh, Michael McDonald is cool. It, yeah. Really? If I could sing See, like Justin Timberlake, I would. Right, exactly. But I can't. And Michael McDonald is cool, but I have no He's, ownership yeah. over his music. Like, I have oh, no... It's, it's p not part of your... It's not yeah. part of my litany of songs, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Like so, Ricky Martin? Phew. Oh. All right. Now, you want to sing my song like Ricky Martin. Living la vida loca. Now, where do you go? Go. That was Michael McDonald Yeah, I know. That was still Michael Ricky McDonald. Martin. <laughs> she bangs. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me get a, a little background here on Brian. He is from Southwest Florida. He grew up in, in, in Fort, Myers. Fort Myers. Yeah, you went oh, to... Wow. A native son. You went to the Cypress Lake High School. Yep. Go Panthers. There you go. And then he went to uh, Florida Southern College for cello. Go Mox. Which is... Oh, sorry, yeah. Mox? Moccasins. Oh. Wow. That, yeah. that scared me a it's little aggressive. bit. aggressive, <laughs> yeah. We're D2. We have a lot to make up for. <laughs> I don't know anything about college sports. All Neither did we. <laughs> yeah. Nice. We don't have football. They're, I mean, they, they have a really great swim team and a really great golf team and a really great... Uh, women's soccer team and apparently a good cello program and a phenomenal cello program that's interesting yeah i've heard brian play cello he's phenomenal and i love the cello me too oh me too. it's so great i know it's, great. it's one of my favorites it's right hey, up there with french horn before we get into deep discussion we should have him play cello on your new record I was thinking that actually. It's already, you heard it here it's, first. It's it's already done. been in my it. brain. We're Contracts in the mail. You know what we should have done what? is had, had him bring it. his cello yeah. today, yeah. and I could have brought my French horn, and we could have done a little classical. Piece. I gotta tell you, I French gotta... horn is the hardest instrument yeah. in the universe. So I it, no, it I went really to college is. for that. It's a hard instrument. Okay, you can be you can be good at a lot of things, but to be good at French horn. It's really oh, tough. It's, it's so it just hard means... she doesn't even play it anymore. Yeah. I set my cello down for six I months mean, when I, I graduated. It's really? it's taxing to get a degree in something like that, man. It's hard. It's They're burning really hard. out, but no, that's such a it's a beautiful instrument. It's so it's difficult a, to it's play. a great instrument, really. And I do I try to record with it every Okay so often. Yeah. yeah don't uh, Okay. We recorded We've done it, it here. Yeah, but we have to edit everything. <laughs> <laughs> um but uh I did want to ask you some questions here, Brian. I'm a great host, by the way. <laughs> Your segues are legend. My segues are awesome. Um, you want to say that again? Try that one more time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, I, I just wanted to talk about how Brian and I met. I want to start oh, out there. God. It's a, I think it's a great story. Were you guys at a phone party? We were not at a phone party. Do they still have those? <sighs> I hope so. If you play French horn... <laughs> So anyway, so it was Christmas Eve, mm -hmm. I think 2013, like five years ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And uh, my girlfriend and I, Lisa, we were at the cigar bar because we were just really bored on Christmas Eve. We, so we went out downtown. And there's this guy next to us talking to somebody else. It's just conversation. And I heard, I think I heard the word Steely Dan or I heard music trivia or something, and I said, hey, I'm a musician. I'll do some music trivia. Mm -hmm. And Brian says to me, name the very first drummer for Steely Dan. And he didn't know anything that I was a huge Steely Dan fan. Yeah. I couldn't answer that question right now. I don't even know why I asked you that. The original drummer for Steely Dan at oh. Bard College okay. was Chevy Chase. Oh, wow. The comedian hmm. Chevy Chase. I remember that, really? yeah. Because yes. I had to Google it, because I totally <laughs> called you a liar. Were and you the host or something? No. No. No, we were sitting at the bar. We were, we were just uh, drinking at the bar. Yeah. Okay. I was a resident alcoholic, that's all. <laughs> it's Christmas Eve. I was at the bar. <laughs> we were at the bar, too. So 
so ever since that time, I felt a special bond because nobody would have ever, ever asked me that question. Right. And he probably said nobody would, should actually know the answer to that question. But um, there was a jam night going on the next night on Christmas Day. Mm-hmm. And uh, Where was that? That was at Tertini's, a, a local yeah. Uh, yeah. bowling alley vodka bar. Yes. Is that place still there? It's still there, still oh, wow. strong. Hmm. So and, and it was a fun little jam, and this you asked me to you play. Brought to you by Tertini's. Yeah, brought to you by <laughs> new sponsor. <laughs> um, but you had asked me to sit in with you, and we played a John Mayer tune and played, played a couple, couple things, John a couple John Mayer tunes, things, yeah. Ain't No Sunshine, and yeah, we had it. We grooved. It, it was, was fun. really fun. It was, yeah, it's fun to just meet somebody randomly and then play music with them well, randomly. And I didn't know anybody. No, at Tertini's, I didn't even know where Tertini's was right. or what. Tertini's and you grew up here. Interesting. Yeah, but it's I. I grew up here. But then not you were. I moved away in '07. Right. And for college, and so, and I graduated, I graduated college in 2011, but I stayed in Lakeland. Right, so, that's right. And Tertini's was built, I want to say in 2012 or 2013. It was, it was Gator Lanes yeah. for years, and then they yeah. added Tertini's to it. But yeah. anyway, hmm. uh, and you, you, a couple months after that, you got married. Um, yes, in 2014. February. Yeah, yeah, yep, a couple months February 1st, later. 2014. Congratulations, five years later. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Still the best decision I've ever made. Nice. Awesome. By a mile. That's, That's awesome. And our new sponsor is your wife's Holly, right? Yep. Our new sponsor for the podcast is Holly. <laughs> yep. Sutherland. Yep. This podcast brought to you by love. Aww. Oh, that's great. And we'll segue right to a love song. Perfect. Maybe not. I've got a bunch of those. Neither of them did we play today. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> My first question, Brian, we're going to talk about songwriting. We're going to talk about some of the stuff you've gone through. Okay. You've, you've had, I mean, you're not very old, and you've had a pretty cool little career right now. And uh, so you. far, rather, I meant to say so far. And, <laughs> you're uh, done. I am the worst host ever. Close the book on your career. <laughs> <laughs> What's the first song you ever remember writing? With Me. With song me. called With, With me. me. Okay. How old were you? 15. Okay. 14? Nice. 14. Mm-hmm. It was like a freshman, sophomore in high school at Cyprus. A friend of mine, um, Sam, and I, and uh, another friend of mine, and just like classmates, we had, we had like, we had home ec, which kids now don't get. Yeah. yeah. I had home ec. I learned how to make cookies. I ate all the cookies. <laughs> uh, in the laundry room area, though, the, while they were doing something else, we were messing around with guitars and learning stuff. And I remember we learned Wonderwall. Oasis oh, Wonderwall. Yeah, yeah. And while I was at home, I was playing around with those chords and I wrote another song. I started writing this other song. And Sam actually came up with a, I want to say he came up with the chorus. And then we put the verses together together. I, w- I want to say it was a long time ago. So yeah, I'm, sure. You know, I, the fish was this big. Um, <laughs> but yeah, With Me was the first song that, that I, I have a writer's so, credit on. Based on that song and you've definitely studied the craft of songwriting since then studying yeah studying yeah how how would you rate that very first song now as a songwriter um good question as well so i'm i need you to clarify though okay as a, if someone brought that to me right now and said hey we'd like to record this mm-hmm. as an adult yeah. or as hey this is the first song a 14 year old kid wrote both okay as first song a 14 year old kid strong start okay um could be a lot worse yeah. Could be a <laughs> lot worse. Um, I've heard worse from adults. So <laughs> I've played in bands with worse from adults, uh, probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, no, I'm very proud of that song. And I've, I've played it every now and again just to kind of revisit it uh, when I find the lyric sheet. <laughs> and, but as, as an adult, no, it had a lot of holes. It, yeah. had a, it had a lot of... But you recognize that now. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, good. It didn't lift where it needed to lift. You know what I mean? It didn't take space where it needed to take space. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Little things like that. Nice. I said... Uh, I started every phrase and a, but a, uh, uh, you know, uh, something yeah. with a little quick, sorry, I mean, hit the mic, something with like a little quick thing that I would never do now. Yeah. If I could help it. Cool. That makes sense. <laughs> totally. That's awesome. Um, it was way too long. So you're like living in Nashville now. No, it's not at all. Uh, you're living in Nashville now and, um, you've done some co-writes, obviously everybody a in Nashville lot. does. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. And you've done some some songwriter rounds where you're out in the club and mm-hmm. switching around. And actually, you're in town playing the Island Hopper Festival. The where, Island Hopper Festival where you'll be doing that. Festival, you'll yeah. be trading off with other songwriters. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm going to come out to a couple if you can make it. Have Sarah. you done that before? This is the fourth year I've done. Oh it. wow! Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, yeah, I've been very lucky. 
They've had me back. BMI, everyone at BMI, David Preston and Dan Spears are are wonderful people. They've been big supporters of me. And Lewis Kaplan from Cat Country and iHeartMedia has been unbelievably helpful in getting me into all this stuff. So I'm I'm couldn't I'm happy That's as a lark. Awesome. I'm yeah. grateful. Awesome. That's great. Well, g- glad to have you back down here. Yeah, Your old stomping grounds. Yeah. When you, I mean, you did you co-write with anybody around here, or was when you got to Nashville? Was that when you first actually like were you nervous on your first co-write? I was kind of like a job that interview too. kind yeah. of thing, you know. So the first co-write experience I have was actually on Skype. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I it wasn't in Fort Myers, it wasn't in Nashville. I lived in Lakeland. It was in Lakeland, and I was visiting Nashville a lot because that's hmm. where I wanted to go because that that. That served two masters. Part of it was it was it was a great music capital in the country, right? And right. the other half of it was it was within one hour of time from home. Sure. Texas is three hours, Cal- or two hours. California's three hours. So I, those weren't really an I, like I didn't ever think of those as an option first. I thought of Nashville first because it was hmm. easy to get back home if I needed to. Heaven forbid anything. Yeah. Um, but so I would visit Nashville a lot, and I I was doing this thing at the Commodore Grill downtown, um, or not downtown, over West End, the Holiday Inn. And um, I had posted on Facebook looking looking for some, who's going to this, or, you know, I'm new in town, just visiting, you know. And this woman said she was going to go, so I was talking to her through Facebook, and then we met at the Commodore. Her name was Lucy LeBlanc, and she was from Canada. And she lives she lives in Canada, but she comes to Nashville for like three months a year. She's, She's from Quebec? She is from. She was just in Quebec. Like I was. Three She's weeks not ago. in Quebec. Oh, I heard French last name. Sorry. Yeah. Continue on. I don't on. know where she's from. She's from Canada. Canada. <laughs> and I want to say she's from like Calgary, but I could be totally wrong. Okay. Um. Anyway, Lucy LeBlanc, and um, so we hung out there, and then we. I said, "Hey, I'd love to get a car ride with you." And she's, she's probably, she's older than I am. And and does this for a, like does this sure. frequently on yeah. Skype? So I said I would love to get it right with you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know I can play and I'll play guitar on it. I know because Skype doesn't line up audio. Like right. I can't sing with yeah, you at the same time. It's a real weird thing. It is. It's very expensive to make that work. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Cisco. Um, <laughs> so we we set up a co-write with me, her, and her co-writer um, Joanne Stacy. And so that was my first co-write experience. Mm. And we wrote a gypsy jazz song. Oh. called Devils in the Details. It's on my most recent yeah. EP. I love that song. It's a fun song. It's so yeah. great. It's the first, that was my first like co-write That's venture. Awesome. That's interesting. Um, I, that in this, my favorite. In this, me, like, in this market. Like sure. I've written songs with friends or something like that, but it's not the same when you're sitting down to write a commercial song or you're trying sure. to write for this, you know? And there's a label called Co-Write in that. Right. The other ones you're just writing songs with your buddies. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's, no, it's a lot less stress, a lot less yeah. pressure. It's a lot less... Um, you're not thinking of the long term. You're just kind of writing. Mm-hmm. You, at the end of the write, you don't go, okay, who's your publisher? Right, who's your, right. Who's, are, yeah. are you BMI? Are you ASCAP? You know, yeah, yeah. you don't worry about all the all the minutiae. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Will you tell us a little bit about that song, though? Devils in the Details? Yeah. Devils in the Details um, started from Lucy talking about, uh, I want to I, I think, forgive me, my memory's god-awful. Um <laughs> I think that it's about her talking about a contract or something where, you know, the devil's in the details of this contract and right. something like that. We said, oh, that'd be funny. We should, that's, that's a music song. Okay? Yeah. That's something that musicians will be like, yes, I get that. Oh, yeah. And so we wrote this song and I said, okay, well, if we're going to do that, we're going to write a song that's, that's kind of a middle finger to the, to the music business a little bit. Mm-hmm. We should write a couple funny verses. Like that should be what mm-hmm. we do. And it's a gypsy jazz thing. So no one's yeah. going to take it seriously on country radio right. anyway. So let's just have fun with it. And, and we did, and we wrote this, the first verse was about a guy being in love with a girl who was really pretty, but that was it. She had no brains. And yep. the other one and saying like the devil's in the details. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Um, and then the second one was like, I took a, I took a job downtown and they, they wanted me up in the penthouse suite. But when I got there instead of a, um, Oh, what did I say? Oh my gosh. I can't remember the words. We'll be right back. I'm yeah. in the studio live. <laughs> oh my Let's gosh. Pull it up. What is it? Yeah. Anyway, instead of like a great job, they gave me a plunger and they said, don't yeah. get anything on your feet. You know, that kind gotcha. of, that devil's in the teeth. And then the last verse is about the music industry. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Good song. So quick. It's a fast song. <laughs> so I do want to bring up uh, 
a, a pretty important section of your life already, young man. Oh, God. The Beach Boys. Oh, yeah. You, you, yeah. Uh, you have actually played with I don't understand some of the this. Beach Boys members. Yeah. yeah, I went on the road with the Beach Boys in 2013. And I've seen some of the videos, and you sound great, brother. Oh, thanks, You sound man. awesome. Thanks, so, what that. happened? What do you mean? Explain. I have on the you notes. You were on the road Sarah, with the Beach Boys. Sarah, I have Boys. on the notes. How? How did, yeah. did you get with the Beach how Boys? Exactly. Did you do this? How did this? How did this happen? Aren't they a hundred years old? The kindest people sort I've of. ever met. Still got to still got to pay the rent, so they still tour some of them. Well, yeah. So the the Beach Boys brand is um, okay. First of all, I have to clarify: yeah. I was not a Beach Boy. I toured with the Beach Boys. With the Beach I have Boys. To clarify okay. That. Sure. Thank you, legal. Um, <laughs> but I I knew the band leader. Um, he lives in Central Florida. Okay. And he and I struck up a friendship after a Canada Day party. And <laughs> he came and saw me play another thing. And I ended up, was teaching his son guitar for a while. And then the the second electric player took time off, took personal time off, kind of last minute. And they called me and just said, hey, you know, would you like to do this? Would you be interested in doing this? And I had three days to learn the whole set. Oh, wow. wow. And like sing baritone. and Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah. yeah. It's a vocal heavy. It's yeah. Yeah. a vocal nightmare. Yeah. It's so hard. Um, and I, and I, I'll be honest, I don't think I did well. <laughs> um, I, to this day, don't believe I did well. Like there were moments where I was like, yeah, I knew that song. But for every one of those, there was about yeah. 40 songs that I didn't know because I didn't grow up with it. Well, you know? yeah, but, right. but, but you Speaking are. Speaking of having ownership over music, like, yeah, I knew Wouldn't It Be Nice. You know, I knew. Of course. Uh, good Vibrations. Yeah. By the end of the tour, Heroes and Villains and Sloop John B became my favorite some of my favorite songs. It's different when you're playing them for an audience and you're playing them multiple times. You know? Right. Because then, like you, you said, you find your favorites. Even if, I mean, there's some shows that I've played where I just don't like the music, but at the end of the tour, I was very happy you I did. You end and, up and, liking it. And, right. and it's cool. Right. So who, who was the, was the original Beach Boys in so there, Mike obviously? Love. It was Mike Love. It was okay. Mike Love was singing and Bruce Johnston was playing keys. Okay. And then um, they they surround themselves with everybody else was hired some yeah. pro guys yeah, yeah some yeah. really John if you ever heard of the Castles the band the Castles they were a, not, they were a big um, family band okay um, 60s 70s I want to say oh, okay and John Castle is the drummer and he's amazing yeah uh, as a drummer he's amazing as a singer he's amazing as mm. a person he was wonderful to be around so. Speaking of the Beach Boys and, and our conversation at the Cigar Bar, mm -hmm. Christmas Eve 2013, I asked him if he had John Stamos's phone number, and he said he did. I do. Yeah, I do. Because <laughs> John, John... I'm sure he's changed Sarah it. Sarah doesn't oh, know, okay. but John Stamos is really good friends with the Beach Boys. Oh, is in, in the Beach Boys Kokomo video, playing tours percussion, with uh, tours with us. He them. toured with us the whole month yeah, I was with him. Did John he really? Stamos is a drummer. On and off, so. on and off, yeah. Huh. And a guitar player, and a, and a singer. Player. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, he I was... I think I've seen him play guitar on Full House, yeah, maybe. with the red, the red big... I think so, sol yeah. Uh, hollow body Gibson. And the no. big hair. <laughs> they, no, yeah, he, he didn't have big he hair. He had the mullet. I mean, was, on, it, on Full yeah. House, he had the yeah, mullet, yeah. He did great. He played, he played congas, excuse me, congas? My girlfriend calls them bongas and congos. <laughs> All right. Are they, are, as you say, congas, conga, conga, conga drums. He played conga drums, um, or congos, <laughs> at the uh, for Kokomo, yeah. right? And then he did like a drum battle with John Castle, and oh, he wow. sang forever from Full House. Oh, that's and cool. He was just—he oh, was a blast. Great. He was a blast. He seemed like a good dude. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. He gave, he gave my, <laughs> he gave me a wedding gift. Um, uh, we were in Biloxi, Mississippi, and he gave me a wedding gift of this bottle of wine. Right for our, for sure. Holly and I for our marriage, right? Because we got we got married in February. This was in October previous year. Okay, and I was like, oh my god, that's amazing. John Stamos got me. Yeah, yeah, there, man. Right? So my sister and my mom and my my soon to be wife drove up to see the show, and Holly was in the bathroom, I think, and so he met my mom. He took a picture with my mom. And then when he met Kelly, my sister, he gave her the wine and said, "Congratulations!" Oh, you know? wow. And I was like, "That's." Thank you, John. That's, <laughs> that's not my wife. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> oh man, perfect diffusal. Did you awesome. did you tell him that he was yeah. not correct? Yes, okay. absolutely. Because oh, I would have just been like, ha ha ha. No. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, but he was amazing. He was really gracious, gracious with his time, and wonderful, wonderful to be around. I do want to talk about the songs we performed, but I have a couple other questions before that. Okay. Okay. Um, 
I did a search on the interweb. Oh, God. And did you YouTube my name? I did. Oh, did you see the boxer? There's another <laughs> Brian <laughs> Sutherland, and he is the world's worst oh, boxer. Yeah, he gets his butt that. kicked. Oh, my gosh. In, in 1993, he gets knocked out in 56 seconds. Ow, cold. And you were, you were like four years old then. 1993, I turned four. You turned four. So he's the worst boxer of all time. Oh, yeah. What are you the worst at? Ooh, I'd probably be. I'd probably give him a run for his money. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not a fighter. I'm not a fighter. I'm. I could outrun darn near anybody. Can you do the kangaroo punches like he did coming out of the no, gate? I, I don't think, think we need I to could. show that video. By the I'll, way, I'll put it. I'll yeah, put it, I'll you play do. It. Yeah, yeah no, he needs it. a resurgence. <laughs> um, I honestly, I hate. I hate that because people look me up on YouTube, yeah. and they're like, "We tried to find you, but." We and did not find you. There's also a Broadway singer named Brian Sutherland too. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Spotify has it. There's like a there's like five singers of all time that are Brian Sutherland that they have on Spotify. Oh, okay. And I have all their albums. They're under my name. <laughs> They're as all an under artist. your name. They're all under my name. And there's no hmm. way to undo that, is there? And I don't make a dime from them. But how do you undo it so it doesn't I've sent get them, listed I've on sent your, them a oh, bunch of have. emails and been like, "Hey, you know, I'm yeah, I'm, I wasn't alive in 1960 when this came out, so couldn't you take my name off it? Oh, jeez. Huh. And you're not getting money for it. Yeah. Right. Jeez. Right. Just confusing my 85 monthly listeners. <laughs> 86 and 87 now, my Holla. friend. Yeah. So what are your views on... Segway. What are your views on... Segways? I think that they're a great way to get around. <laughs> Have you ever ridden one? I have not. I haven't either. I want one. It's I a really segue about segways. Perfect. <laughs> that is freaking awesome. Have you ridden one? Nope. Nope. We need to do that. I think you have to be a cop or the security guard at a fair. No, or you can or go on a segue. Visiting from Ontario. Tour. Is that yeah. what it is? Yeah. I drove. So we were driving down. Um, I, this this tour has been with my friend Nick Nick Nace and I. We spent a day in Florence and then came down and did a bunch of. Tours, but the we drove by this RV that the RV it was it was like he had every toy that you could ever want. Mm. He had a he had a full Prevost RV with a motorcycle on a rack behind it with a full trailer. At the end of the trailer were two Segways wrapped up <laughs> and, and like all this all this stuff. Was, was like, it a two story? <laughs> The, Prevost? N- it was no, no. It wasn't a double decker Prevo, no. But it, I was like, I was looking at it. And I'm like, this guy cashed in all his insurance money. Yeah, like he, exactly. he's got nothing left. I'm going on you the know. road. I'm right, it right. We're moving to Florida. Yeah, that's it. And those are the kind of guys that, guys that die like three days after they retire. Right. <laughs> on a Segway. <laughs> on a Segway. <laughs> on seventy five. On seventy five. <laughs> I must have took a wrong turn here. All right, we're gonna we're gonna take a quick little break here and. Uh, Check with our sponsors and see who's sponsoring us. Maybe Segway. Tertinis. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Holly Sutherland. Holly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're back with Brian Sutherland. Hey. Nashville living, how do you say that? Nashville resident, <laughs> uh, Fort Myers native. That's how you say there it. There we go. Ooh, got Glad that one living. Out. Yeah, hello. A Floridian <laughs> living Woo-hoo. in Tennessee. There you go. So I wanted to ask you uh, some of your views on certain subjects in our culture today, like reality singing shows. What do you think about them? Um, well, I don't, I don't really have an opinion on them. Honestly. If you got asked to be on one, would you would do, you do it? it? Um, yeah. If yeah, you got really. asked to judge on one, would you do it? In a heartbeat. Uh, yeah, that yeah, sounds like way more fun than being on one. I don't know, man. I'd, I would... Any opportunity to do anything with your career, you should say yes to it. We're we're all in a position mm-hmm. to say yes. That's that, that is a great answer. That's a good answer. I mean, yeah, that's how I view it. Awesome. Um, what do you think of the current country pop trends that are mixing hip hop elements Man, and there, EDM elements with there country? There's good everywhere. Yeah, there's good everywhere. There's bad with the good. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. There's some stuff that I don't put on that I don't really care for, but. It's there's good in there. Do as you well. still feel like it's good songwriting in some of those songs, or you think it's cheese? Yeah. You think it is good? Um, okay. So there's. I a, agree with you. I just wanted. There's your a and I don't know how licensing on podcasts work. If if I if I was to say lyrics to a song with that, that's would, fine. Okay, mm-hmm. so there's um there's a Devin Dawson song out called um, All on Me, that was like. Uh, you got my number. You can call on me when you're when it gets heavy. Put the fall on me when you're mad. You can take it out on me. All this that's clever stuff. Yeah, like mm-hmm. it, it's not easy to write that. Yeah. Um, and I mean, everything that we write, 
my friend Dave Fenley told me this, and I agree with him perfectly. Every song that I write, I compare to the house that built me. Um, Miranda Lambert's The House That Built okay. Me. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? Just a perfect oh, yeah. song. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's an amazing song. The first time I heard it, I wept. And I, I have no dogs in the hunt on that song. <laughs> like, I, I didn't grow up in that house. I, it's yeah. not my life at all. But, but you, it, felt the, you felt it the story. Just, it yeah. moved me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, there's great everywhere. You know what I mean? Well, that's a great segue to talk about Where Do You Go, a song that we performed, and we're going to play it for you here after we talk about this little mm-hmm. segment. Can you explain this song? Because I heard you do this at the Barrel Room downtown, mm-hmm. and I couldn't, the sound wasn't the best, so I couldn't hear all the lyric. Right. But boy, when I heard that chorus, I, I just got to chill just now thinking about that yeah. feeling I had when I heard that chorus. So that song is about, that song is written by me and Jody Stewart Regner. Jody is a Canadian songwriter, is my number one co-write. I write with her more than I write with anybody cool. else. Mm. Um, and Jody is is a wonderful lyricist and creates these beautiful images with lyric that I I I love working with her because she can do something that I I just can't. You mm-hmm. know, she paints a beautiful picture. And the song started. She brought it to me as a song for her dad who had passed away. Mm-hmm. And about that time, my grandfather passed away. Wow. And my grandfather was the only kind of musical person involved in my family, so oh, okay. um, it you know it meant a lot to me to do something for him as well. So we mm-hmm. we we combined those two things and fashioned the lyric in such a way that it would it would pay a good homage to both. Yeah. Um, but the idea of the song was, you know, you know, if I'm talking about my perfect example, I'm talking about my grandfather right now, right? He's at the tip of my tongue. I know exactly where he is, right, in my life. But when I'm not talking about him or, or I'm going about my life, well, where does he live in that? Mm-hmm. That's wow, kind of the yeah. idea. Yeah. So, it's a very visual, the lyrics are very visual. Very they visual. are, yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's Jody, man. I tell you, <laughs> she's a freaking Rembrandt with, with words. The wow. macaroni frame. Gets me every time. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, yeah. Great. It, took me, it took me recording that. Four times before I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, All right, I can get through this." Yeah, yeah, I wow. bet. I yeah. bet. Well, let's go ahead and play. Uh, Where do you go, uh, Brian Sutherland? Here in Music Studio Live. Pictures still hanging on my wall In that old macaroni frame That I made for you When I was only eight And there was magic in your fingertips The way you picked those rusty strings I could still hear you smile when you'd sing I wish I could hear you sing And where do you go? You're not on my mind Where do you live the rest of the time? Where do your smiles fade away to? And where do you go? Close my eyes and see Every single memory Tears rolling down my cheek I just don't want to know Don't hang here anymore No muddy boots sitting on the porch It's all packed up and donated to the church Every once in a while I see someone in town Wearing that old cross necklace It still makes my heart heavy in my chest It's heavy in my chest And where do you go? You're not on my mind Where do you live the rest of the time? Where do your smiles fade away to? And where do you go? Close my eyes and see Every single memory The tears 
tears rolling down my cheek I just don't wanna know I just don't wanna know You're still hanging on my wall In that old macaroni frame That I made for you When I was only eight For more information on Brian Visit SutherlandSongs.com I did want to ask about your family, actually, because um, you grew up here in Fort Myers, but I do know your mom owns a restaurant that I've been to and before I even knew you. Oh, yeah. And she, she had said, my son's a singer-songwriter, and me and my girlfriend like, <laughs> yeah, okay, great. yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, yes, I do <laughs> own a studio, but yeah, whatever. Turkey on rye. <laughs> <laughs> that what might be what I ordered, that? actually. <laughs> But um, t- come to find out, you were her son. So yeah. Her, are her son. What so. restaurant? She owns the Metro Deli and Cafe, which oh, is over cool. off Metro Parkway yeah. um, in the Metropolis Center. She by now, the train store. By the, the train, train store. That I told yeah. you about for your son. Yep. And yep, she yep. also owns the Fort Myers Beef Jerky, which is attaches the wall there. Oh, yeah. Yum. Mm-hmm. Yep. And and she was at the barrel room and, and actually she said hi to me and I said hi her, to her and she goes, make sure you tell people that we have the beef jerky store now. <laughs> She's really excited. It was awesome. Man. I was like, you got That's it, great. man. That's yeah. great. You got it, dude. <laughs> Full house reference, no? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Anyway. So you're, it didn't so you're see it family. because you're not a cute little kid when you did it. <laughs> big big you're, time. You're cute, but you're not a little kid. I'm not a little kid. You got it, dude. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. See? Perfect. Perfect gift. So uh, tell us more. Uh, so you said your grandfather was the only one that was kind of musical in your family? Yeah. I mean, he he, he was a musical person. He sang a lot and he he gave he would sing like old Frank Sinatra songs. So today. is that no, where your great. gift comes from? I have no idea. Because you, you're very talented cello. Do you have brother, sister? I do. I have a family of of um, people. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I that's do. good. Yeah. I was like, man, that was a heck of an answer. Um, There's yes. a couple of unicorns and horses in our family. <laughs> no, I have a I have an older brother and an older sister, um, who were both really athletic in, in um, school, and I was super not. And my dad and my mom were not musical um, at all. You know, it's just just happened. Yeah. How did you figure out you weren't athletic? Was there a Through moment? Through trial and tribulation. He was a, bo- <laughs> yeah. he was a boxer in 1993. <laughs> my, my brother would say my or my parents would say that. Um, you know, I, they asked me to take care of the lawn or like mow the lawn. And I came back and I was just flush, <laughs> oh. beat red, and um, and my uh. poor brother had to do it. And he was he was wired for outdoors. I'm I'm just not. I wasn't ever wired. I'm fair skin. I'm an indoor cat. You're yeah. wired for a studio. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. I'm I'm wired for a computer screen. Um, <laughs> so yeah, and I I played sports, but not well. You yeah. Know? And when I got the opportunity to go to, get, I was sitting in PE sixth grade. And a guy with a ponytail came out. We're sitting on the tarmac in August, taking roll call, you know, which is awful. Yeah. I, I'm sweating thinking about it. And he said, uh, hey, we're going to start an orchestra. And I, I raised my hand and asked if it got me out of PE. And he was like, yep. I said, all right. Sign me up. I'm in. <laughs> oh, perfect. I'm in. I started guitar the same day. You started on French horn and then you switched over to <laughs> cello. No. Yeah, no. I tried the French horn. Once in my life, I won't ever do it again. That was it. So hard, traumatizing. The damn French. It's so, but you, amateur. you said guitar. you started guitar, but cello and guitar on the same day. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Cool. Yeah. I have another segue. I have a question about how did the artist Australian artist Bloom get a hold of your song "Sweetest Love"? Oh man, I have no idea how she got a hold of it. And the reason I'm really? asking you, yeah. 
is because in an interview that I read online, she said she loves your songs and wants to that you'll be writing for the rest of her album. I don't know if that happened yet, but it hasn't yet. But that that but is it's the plan. In the works, yeah. yeah, that is the plan. So she loves what you do. As she, do we. Um, and she's wonderful. She and you're very kind. She is a, a wonderful artist in Australia, and um, I got a f- text message from Jody. That was a song that Jody and oh, I had okay. written together. Oh wow. And I got a text message from Jody saying, hey, I got an email from this woman that wants to talk to us about cutting Sweetest Love. And I was, was like, Sweetest Love okay. about Holly? No, actually. This episode is not sponsored by <laughs> Holly Sutherland. <laughs> not every love song I write is about my wife. I know. This one actually has a really cool story, though. So I'm glad you asked me about this. I was scrolling through Facebook, and I came across this status that was really well written, a, a, kind of a love letter from from um, of a friend of mine to her girlfriend, and the the next one down was her retort or oh, her response, nice. which was equally as eloquent. And oh. so they're just putting neither it, putting of it them there. grammarly could I ever even touch wow. grammatically. Jeez, I just <laughs> there you go exactly. failed on that grammarly. Wah, wah, it's wah. more funner. Oh, no, I I just I was like you do good with English. Yeah. So I screen capped them both, and I was just I was dumbfounded. I sat there like this has to be a song. This there's got to be something in there. So th- the line that stuck out, she said. I rise in love with you every day. And I was like, Ooh. what does that mean? Like, I rise in love with you every day. I said, that's really cool. So we start, I started from that perspective, and I, I called Jody and was like, okay, we need to write this. I don't know how we're going to do it, but we need to write this. I'm, I sent her the statuses. She really liked the idea. And I started writing the chorus. I believe I started writing the chorus. Um, and because that was the first line of the chorus, to the sweetest love I've ever known, um, I want to face the world with you. That was the first three lines of the first of his Facebook um, status of of um, huh. of hers. Oh, hers! Uh, and it was just yeah. I was like, yeah. Thank you, heaven. <laughs> yeah, like, right. Oh my word. So we wrote that song, and and it always did something for me. It was always meant something to me. We put it. I put it out with the coming home EP on Spotify, which is available on Spotify if you search Brian Sutherland on Spotify. It's really good. I'm gonna put all that stuff up on the screen. Okay. Anyway, she found that EP and she liked. Oh, so she found you. She that. found it on Spotify. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh wow. That's yeah. good to know that that works. Yeah, it's so, valuable for yeah for a song yeah. that has less than a thousand listens. Somehow, one of them was this woman in That's Australia. Cool. Awesome. I was insane. So now, do the Facebook posters? Do they get credit? I was just going to say, we just got a, 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 a the lawyer of the couple on Facebook just sent us a message. So they don't know yet. Okay. Well, they there you go. still don't know that I've written that song yeah. for them. This has been, this has been a couple years, yeah. and that song has been the first dance for like six different groups of my friends. Yeah. Wow. And like I, I was brought to Nashville for a couple friends, um, Jimmy Stanley and Kristen Kelly when they got married. They're artists on the Island Hopper Fest. Oh, cool. This weekend too. When they got married, that was their first dance. You know. And oh, it's that's like, cool. Stuff I was like thinking that, that was you know? a great first. It dance was an song. awesome. Oh, when yeah. I listened to it, yeah, yeah. it's amazing. Welcome back to Music Studio Live. Oh, that was a nice segue. I mean, intro. Scooter. I don't even know what word I'm saying. <laughs> Do it in your radio voice. Welcome back to Music Studio Live. Oh, that's nice. You should make him record a bunch of voiceovers before he leaves. Okay. <laughs> What's that sound? <laughs> Ka-ching! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess we have to make money before you can make money. Um, oh, this is the music business in a nutshell there, yeah, right there. We're, we're right in the middle <laughs> yep. of it. <laughs> Yep. Um, what was I going to ask yeah, you? Yeah, why Crap. don't you describe that a little bit, actually, the music business I mean, and your opinion of it? We don't have enough it. time of that. But um, you were asking me while we, while we were taking a break about songwriter. Mm-hmm. And like as a as a Nashville songwriter from conception to uh, release, I guess. Right. So there's a, there's a big chunk of that that I don't know because I haven't had it happen yet. Okay. But from my perspective, it's you, you're in a song, you're in a room together, you're writing the song together. Great. Um, you demo that song, whether that be in the room, if you have a producer you're writing with, right. they demo it there, or if you schedule the demo for a later time, you pay for it, that kind of thing. Um, once the demo's done, then it's a matter of meetings and who knows who and who's looking for who and who owes me a favor and all that. That's wow. what it seems like, you know, and what, who does the song fit? You know, you're, yeah. I'm not going to send a song that was written for Blake exactly. Shelton to Kenny Chesney. It's not... 
if I can help it, you know, I'd like to send it to Blake. Yeah. Right. But I don't have his number, you know. <laughs> right. When I was on the road with the Forrester sisters, we would be on the tour bus. They were getting ready to do a new album. Right. And literally, it was cassette tapes and CDs. Yep. Still cassette tapes at that time. Yeah. And we would literally sit on the bus for a half hour to 45 minutes and go through the first verse and first chorus. Yeah. Mm. And right, we knew right away... I mean, and I had no say in it. It was them. Did it work or didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Right away, you'd know, yep, nope, oh, keep that one, listen, listen, put that one in this pile. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Yes, no, second listen. Exactly. Yep. Interesting. So, but how do you get in front of these publishers and people like that? Relationships. I got, any relationship I have with any publisher Mm -hmm. started at a festival like Island Hopper. Oh, interesting. Because, not because they're there. But because the writers are there, okay. So if I meet, I see. if I meet a writer who's with this publisher, and mm-hmm. I end up writing with him back in Nashville, then it's a lot easier for me to get to know some. Or um, I was in Texas and I met a, a guy named David Lee, mm-hmm. and and David Lee's got a bunch of cuts, and he he was like, "Hey, I think you're moving to Nashville." I said, "Yeah." He goes, "All right, here's I'm going to put you on a group message," and he sent it to the head of Universal and the head of Wow um, Black River hmm. and the head of BMG. And that's a good. I, th- I think that's it. And said, "Hey, meet with this kid." And so they met with me. That's and awesome. I got to play them five or six songs a piece. And it's not, a, uh, it's not an ANR person. It's not a, yeah. a, a secretary. It's the president. Were of you that ready company. for that? Wow. You feel no. That, that's what. That's <laughs> no. exactly where I was thinking. That's an opportunity I was not ready yeah, for. Ready and, for. And now that I've lived there a year. I'm still not ready for it. Yeah. You know, well, that's what Tim McGeary said, too. He got to write with these great writers right away, and he just wasn't ready yet. Yeah. He knows that now, and what wow. a gift to know that. Yeah. and Because I kn- you can grow from that. If yeah. you think that you did a great job and it was them that didn't like you, right? that's right. cool to know the difference. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I've am i always been kind of a late bloomer in that, like, I'm better the second time around. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. usually kind of the yeah. way I've always had with everything in my life. That's yeah. kind of just been something that's happened. Um, and that's been, the, thankfully, Nashville is one of those places that the writers take chances, you know, because mm-hmm. cause there are 365 days and that's 365 songs we could be writing. Yeah. You know, that's a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm very lucky there. Yeah, that's interesting. I would just, I would think that it would be so scary to just put yourself in front of people like that. Yeah. 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 That's my job in a nutshell. Yeah. <laughs> Fear. <laughs> No, Fair. it's it's not. Scary. You just scared the daylights what, out what of them. You, what's scary about it? What are they going to say? No. Okay. Yeah, I guess. I mean, just be like, okay. thank you. Yeah. No. See hey, that's later. not working for us. Well, think about all the actors okay. that go on countless Absolutely. auditions. Oh, I know. All the time. It, basically, you're kind of auditioning. Right. I mean, to a degree. Not, yeah. No. Not basically. You, you are. are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're auditioning. Absolutely. These songs. I mean, when you're songwriting, co-writing with somebody, you're sort of auditioning with them too. If they're higher up extent, on the scale well, than you are. Yes, but at the same time, we're all equal. If you, mm-hmm. I think of it, yeah, and, okay. I, and I know a lot of writers that do, they think of it in terms of equals, but do we work well? Yeah. Okay, right. So yeah. just because I've written with a, with a guy who's won Grammys, and I can't stand writing with him. Yeah. We just don't see eye to eye. Yeah. You know, it's our forms of writing. Are is totally that Phil different. O'Donnell? I will never say who that is, because he's a sweetheart of a guy. I know, I'm kidding. But I, I just, I have a beer with him, but I can't write with him. Yeah. Yet. And yeah. then there are other people who are, I wrote with a 16-year-old kid, and I was like, Heck yeah, I'll do this again in a heartbeat. <laughs> awesome. you know? Nice. Cool. Because they're not, they're taking chances because they don't know any better. Yeah. You know, versus the old, some of the older guys get stuck in this, well, it has to be this way. Sure. You well, know? like yeah. a 15 year old Brian Sutherland. Yeah, right. He was a jerk. <laughs> that guy was a jerk. So, what do you think was the quickest song you've ever written? Ooh. I mean, I, well, that I perform? Yeah, that, that you're, you, you're solid with that you love, yeah. that you play. Oh, man. Come back to that. I'm going to have to think about that. All right, what's, how about the longest? The one that took you forever? It's not a song yet. called Saltwater. <laughs> it's not written yet. <laughs> no, it has. It is. Oh, that's funny. That's a funny joke. I didn't even... That wah, didn't even wah, hit me. Wah. Anyway. Um, Saltwater was, was all day. Um, we took a lunch break to do it. It was like eight hours. Wow. Oh, Actually, wow. I think that that's still pretty quick, though. Yeah, that's pretty quick. Eight hours is a long. Eight hours of focused songwriting is a long time. Yeah, but people like Peter Gabriel and stuff would take months to finish. A yeah, song, to write I've a taken song. months to finish the song. Yeah, but you're not putting. You're not doing how it many, as a business. How, yeah. Right, how many structured just, hours are you focusing on that one oh, song? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean. Five minutes at a time. Yeah, right. <laughs> with, with and as children. soon as you get stuck, you close the book. You know? Right. Exactly. Uh, yeah, baby. Okay, I'm gonna work on this tomorrow. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, what's the first CD you bought? 
in your life? Um, was it a CD or was it a cassette? Are you old or? enough to know what CDs are? No, he knows what they are. <laughs> System of a Down. Oh, good Toxicity. One. Nice. That was the first CD I purchased myself. Second one was the Metallica Black Album. Yeah, hmm. nice. Yeah, with your own money, yeah. Because your yeah. parents probably bought you stuff before that. Yeah. Um, what's uh, We're going to get to the song here in a minute, but uh, what's the last gift you gave somebody? Ooh. I know, isn't that a cool yeah. question? I love well, that. Well, I just bought my mother in law a gift. Does that count? But I haven't given it to her yet. So don't don't say what it is. So yeah, that well, counts. Well it'll it'll come out by then. I just yeah. bought her two glasses two bottles of wine from uh, Keelan Curly Winery in Plant City. Oh cool. this this podcast is sponsored by Keelan Curly Winery. <laughs> That's interesting because I was in Plant City on Friday with Caleb. Oh yeah. That's strange. Caleb, let's talk about him for a second too. Uh, Caleb is the, the, the young fellow. The gentleman that uh, played guitar and sang backups. He's got more of a Nashville look than I do. <laughs> and he lives in Florida. God, I don't have good fashion. Well, Jeez. what's funny is Caleb owns a studio in town, and, mm-hmm. and we've worked together on some projects. And he told me that he met you for the first time. I think it was for the first time at a party that was at his house. You were about oh, 15 funny. or 16. Yeah. Wow. And he said that they were people were all just hanging around and and nobody was really like playing music or anything and and you had spotted his guitar and you picked up his guitar and I'm, not, I'm good at a lot of things but not hanging out with not people hang, and, and not. That's, that's what he so said. Funny. Yeah. He said he was by kind of just alone by himself yep. with the guitar starts singing and everybody in the party's kind of like you're like sitting down in the floor and everybody's yeah. kind of like great. Who, who who's this kid? What the what's he that's it's good. Well, What's I can he doing? tell you He's never good. stop playing. <laughs> yeah, no, I never yeah. stopped playing. And I wasn't good at talking around, to people. You so. are just yeah, playing something. I couldn't something. help myself. And when I met Caleb, he was playing for a band called Pilot Light. Mm. He was running a band called Pilot Light. And I watched them. And they were the first rock show that I went to that I was just like, this is the coolest thing oh. I've ever seen. And in my he life. actually said that you would stick around and help them load out because I've you, always you oh, just wow. wanted you wanted to be around I've it. I've always been That's there. Great. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So I have a gig this Saturday. Can you come and help me with my gear? <laughs> it's funny. There's a friend of mine in, in Central Florida named Jeff Phillips, who's a brilliant pianist, like world round pianist. And he had a back surgery where he couldn't really lift a whole lot. And we were working a festival. I was playing at the festival and I just wanted a, 10 minutes of his time because I thought he was a genius. Yeah. And he is a genius. And he like loaded out and he had all his stuff sitting down. He was going to get his car. And I said, man, someone asked him for an interview or something. And I said, Hey, give me your keys. What do you drive? And he told me this, this black Jetta, whatever. So I found his car. <laughs> I brought his car up. I filled up all his, his car with the gear, exactly how I would do it, yeah. Tetris wise. You know yeah. how Tetris. Yeah, oh, yeah. I know how You're Tetris. Tetris. Oh yeah. And I put his car back and I brought him his keys and said, "Hey, man, great job. Thanks." So, and I put a little thank you note on his on Aww, his stuff that's for great. playing the festival. And he he got a hold of me afterwards. We saw him in a bar or something. He's like, "Nobody has ever packed that car." <laughs> Just like me, Whoa. like you crushed it. Yeah, You're the best roadie I could ever. It's I was like, gift. yes, that's great. Yes, it is a gift. <laughs> teach me your ways. <laughs> I'm trying to teach my son how to pack my car. That's good. Yeah. That's honestly, my we've ran restaurants and catering my whole life. I, that's I'm good at that. Yeah. <laughs> I can pack a van. All right. What's a song or an artist that always makes you feel good? If you're in a weird mood or funky mood or something, is there something you can put on? I have mine. I have I'm one sure song. You have yours. There's, There's one okay. song that I go to that if I'm nervous or I'm anything but but even keeled, I listen to a song called "Empty" by Ray Lamontang off his first album. Ooh, hmm. Nice. And and I and it puts it. It's a it's a thing. Yeah. Calms me down immediately. It's if I'm on the on the like way a to a gig and I'm a little nervous or something. If I put anything by Steve Gadd that Steve Gadd played drums on, mm. I, I'm fine. Interesting. I, do, I get through yeah. the gig. I'm fine. I listen to nothing. Nothing. <laughs> it's funny. Sometimes we, that works. I drove all the way from Nashville to Jacksonville with another guy in the car, and we never listened to music. Isn't either. that funny? Yeah. I don't really listen to music in the car if I don't have to. Yeah. I, I was in the car with Caleb for three and a half hours, and we for, we, we were talking and enjoying the conversation yeah. so much that we got about 30 minutes away from the venue, and we we're like, oh, no, we got to learn the songs. Oh, <laughs> so no. So we, we listened. He, he was singing his harmony parts and stuff. <laughs> Needless to say, don't hire Caleb and Daryl <laughs> yeah. if you want the songs rehearsed. I had charts. Yeah. Oh, um, let's talk about Getaway. Okay. The, the other song that we performed, and then we'll, we'll talk about that. Or, okay. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about it, and then we'll play it for you. I wanted to ask one question, oh, though, before okay. we go into that song. Okay. I just want to know, what was your worst gig that you've ever had? God, you ask the hardest questions. I just, I um, think that we've all I played terrible gigs. Well, yeah, so, like me at a funeral home. 
I was Wait, at, I played a fu- funeral home with you. Yes, you When did. the lady fell down oh, and they had no. to call the ambulance. I thought Aww. she was dead. I thought she was dead, I too. I thought she was she dead. She was already at the funeral home. <sighs> I've So there's a couple. There's a couple that come to mind. One was a weird gig. I got hired to play Somewhere Over the Rainbow on an Ovation ukulele. Oh, no. Oh. In cargo <laughs> shorts and sandals and a tank top. At the Shell Factory. Oh, <laughs> perfect in North Fort Myers. While they walk down the aisle. Wow. That's, oh, a, that's, that's a real gig that's that great. happened. That's great. And you got paid, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, good. Not enough, good, but good. yeah. <laughs> um, and then the other two involved, I had a bri- I did a lot of weddings when I was in college. And a bride, we did this wedding where a bride got a little inebriated. <laughs> and on the break, the band took a break and the band went back to the RV and I was running the running sound and running DJ. And she jumped up on stage during Don't Stop Believing," oh, man. And right before the, oh. cor- the guitar solo kick, there's like a kick and a snare yeah. hit. It's like... Vroom, ba-da. Well, when she did that, she threw down a thing of bourbon on my pedal board. Oh, no. And fried my pedal board. Oh, no. And like turned and kicked my guitar over. <laughs> oh, no. And I just was like... <laughs> and they paid us for it. I mean, they covered it. You know, there was but still, devils in the details. Wow. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> um, and they were, you know, it's their wedding night. You know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's you, it's, it's there's a fine line on That's, weddings sometimes. Yeah. How angry can you get right. at the bride and groom when right. they do stupid right. stuff? The downside was that was the third gig on a six gig weekend, oh. and I didn't have anything no. else. We were oh. we were four hours from home, and I was like, oh, "Where's oh, the nearest no. pawn shop?" Right, and we had a festival at like 10 a.m. the next morning, so mm. I was like, "Okay, I gotta, I gotta, I just gotta get through this." <sighs> Ooh. Um, and then the other one was also in North Florida. And it was a wedding, and we played by request. We played Seminole Wind for mm-hmm. the bride, John Anderson. John Anderson, and um, and the guy. I saw him in the back. I saw him. He just like lost it, and he like threw his drink down. And he walked all the way up to the front of the stage, and we're on a big trailer. You know, you know yeah. the trailer, trailer gigs, bed, yeah. right? Yeah. And he pulled the plug <gasps> on an eight piece band. Oh. Pulled. I mean, pulled all the power. Wow. Right. wow. And said, you can't play that stuff here. This is gator country. Oh, my goodness. And I goodness. was like, oh, God. Wow. So At a wedding. That's a breach of contract because you touched our stuff. Yep. Exactly. So I, I said, plug it back in. Just just plug it back in. We won't play it again. So he plugged it back in. We made sure everything was working. Mind you, I have like a 1980s boogie amp that could have just blown up. Yeah. That I can't replace. And I looked at the bride and the groom. And the mic came up and I said, hey. I thank you guys so much. That's a breach of contract. We're out of here. Have a great night. You know, and it, what side of the family was he on? The bride. He or the was groom? the venue owner's son. Oh, <gasps> he wasn't even there for the wasn't wedding. even there for that. And it caused such an uproar that the guy was like, "Well, let me help you get out of here." And he like ripped my mixer off the stage, and it was it was this big. Oh, wow! No. It almost was a royal rumble. Yeah, it was pretty impressive. Well, you are Brian Sutherland, the world's worst boxer. So <laughs> <laughs> I had other people representing me. <laughs> Uh, great right, so, answers. <laughs> so let's talk about uh, Getaway. Get, Getaway. So Getaway came as a co-write. Okay. Um, I wrote it with Dave Fenley and Brent Michael Wood. And Brent is a um, an artist in San Antonio, and Dave and I both live in Nashville, but Dave is from San Antonio. So Brent came up to Nashville to visit to write for a record, and I was brought in kind of um, last minute on it. was like a 6 o'clock at night, right? I ran over to Dave's house. We sat down and wrote, knocked the whole song out in maybe two and a half hours oh, wow. mm. really fast yeah and just didn't even think anything of it just knocked it out great recorded did a work tape wonderful awesome have a great night gonna go hang out with my wife and i did a gig later and i don't know if it was me or if it was dave that suggested like someone suggested that we do the song so we did it at the listening room and it Slayed. Yeah. It just did it's a so strong, real good. strong chorus. And the bridge had yeah. the whole crowd involved in the bridge. And it was like, this just went really well. We really need to look at recording this. So we brought it to um Chris Utley at Benchmark. Mm-hmm. Um and we recorded it with with I mean ace yeah. Nashville yeah. musicians, the best Nashville musicians. Yeah. Unbelievable. It sounds great. Guys. The recording it does, great. yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. So I don't know really what we're doing with it now. We're we're sharing it with publishers and we're trying to get it some it's traction. On the shelf. It's on the shelf. <laughs> it's not necessarily my song. It's not necessarily sure. a, a Brian Sutherland release, you know, or anything like that. But I play it and I love it. Yeah. And um, maybe one day I will. You know, we'll see. Cool. There's awesome. I've written way more songs than I've released. So and this is Getaway. Come on, baby We've been to 
same thing but way too long It's time we change that song We've got, we've got each other We got a chance to set this world on fire Oh, jump on in, baby We're going for a ride Let's make a getaway down this highway Hit the state line by dawn You and me with the world in the rear view Looking like a light from a petty song We'll be free falling just like gypsies Straight for that setting sun I'll drive if you go with me Come on, baby visit our website at musicstudiolive.com. There you'll find all of our social media links. You're tuned in to Music Studio Live. All right, we're back, and I just want to say thanks to Brian. This, is, this has been a great hang, and the music's awesome. And, uh, you know, you meet a guy in a bar... And and five years later, you, and his you, mom tells you that he's got a kid with a music and all that. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you go to the beef jerky store and Metro uh, Deli. In the Metro Deli. <laughs> thank you guys so much for having me. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you, Brian. You, this was awesome. Yeah, thank You've you. You've always been very supportive of me, so I really appreciate it. And we will continue to be good. <laughs> Perfect. Here's that twenty dollars. Yeah. <laughs> the checks are still clearing. <laughs> you can find me online at SutherlandSongs.com. I have it right here, actually. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I'll put it Now on. I can see the notes. I'll put it on the screen. Yeah. Right there. there it is. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Thanks, have Brian. a great day. All right. And this Music Studio Live, and uh, thanks for joining us. I'm such a nerd. Uh, I know. You're a drummer. I actually thought about doing that, too, and I was like, don't <laughs> I'm not do going to go down to his <laughs> level and do that. Okay, this is Daryl Nutt reporting live. This is Sarah Hadika's very first time in a Wawa. Are you excited? I'm so excited. I heard about the dark roast coffee and also ah. sandwiches. And just overall how incredibly amazing Wawa's are. I can't wait to be inside of it. Oh, I've been waiting. <laughs> We're gonna look like idiots in here. Look at all the 
stuff. So you go up to a screen and you put your order in. Do I get my Meow, 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 meow.